This is the alternate version of exercise 9-1 found on page 428 of the textbook from chapter 9, Reporting and Analyzing Current Liabilities. This problem is on computing and interpreting the times interest earned ratio. It says use the following information from separate companies A through F to compute the times interest earned ratio. Remember the times interest earned ratio is the income before interest and taxes. What pool of money does the company have before it pays out interest and before it pays out taxes? We're looking at that pool of money and how many times over it could cover the company's interest expense. This ratio is a key ratio used by creditors for uh, companies to get some sense of their ability to pay debt going forward. So to use that ratio to calculate the uh, ratios, the time interest for all of these companies, we're simply going to take their income before interest and taxes, divide that by interest expense, but are we given interest before income and taxes? No, we're giving their net income, which is after everything, 138000 So we simply need to take the net income and add these items back to figure out what that pool of money is. Then divide whatever we come up in the numerator for that pool of money by expenses, interest expense, in the denominator to find out how many multiple times over we can cover interest expense. So income before interest and taxes, we'll take the 138000 plus 78,660 plus 34,550. So before all these deductions, there was income before interest and taxes of 251,160. Interest expense, well that's given 78,660. Just divide and we have our times interest earned ratio of 3.19. This means based on the income that the company earned in this year, they could cover their interest expense 3.19 times. Creditors would see that as a pretty decent cushion. They could cover the, at least the interest cost 3.19 times. For the company in B, take net income, add back interest expense, add back income taxes, and the pool of money is 224094. Divide that by the interest expense, a 43,758, and this company had a coverage of 5.12. Oh, stronger than company A. Company B, we add all of their items up to 215,883, divided by the low interest expense of 7,055, and this company has a very, very strong times interest coverage. They can cover their interest cost at least 30 times. Creditors would feel pretty confident lending to this company because of its strong, strong interest before income and taxes and their very low interest expense. Company D, 21346 divided by 46920 for a 4.55 coverage ratio. E, 140,829 divided by 17043 for an 8.26 coverage. And F, well, we can take that interest expense, add it back to the net loss because that interest expense, once that was deducted, that actually helped to cause the net loss. They didn't pay any taxes because you don't pay taxes when you lose money. So therefore, their income before interest in taxes was 17,002. Interest expense of 55,642. Ooh, will these guys have coverage or not? No, they have a coverage of less than one. They don't have enough income before interest and taxes to cover their interest expense fully. So let's take a look at these companies. Which company indicates the strongest ability to pay interest expense as it comes due? Well, that's clearly company C. They have a times interest coverage ratio of 30.60. That's means that they have a strong likelihood of being able to continue to pay interest as it comes due in the future as long as they continue to generate in the future what? Similar levels of interest income before, income before interest and taxes.